I'd like to say good morning again and like to welcome you to the seventh annual Positive Coaches Al Coaching Alliance Awards Banquet presented by the Hanover Company. Uh, my name is Butch Alcindor and I've already talked to some of you today and a lot of you know me from my days in TV, over 20 years uh, doing sports at Channel 11. And I had a story I was going to tell you really quickly, but I just saw Steve Maniachi down here and it reminded me that I had a better story last week, so I think I'm going to switch to that story instead. But uh, uh, I was uh, telling him that uh, I ran into a, a lady and her young son recently, and she came over and she said, hey, you're, you're that TV guy, aren't you? And I said, yes. And then she turned to her son and she said, I grew up watching that guy on TV. And I've already heard that twice this morning. <laughs> so I said, I don't want to be rude, but how old are you? And she looked at me and she said, 32. And then that's when it really hit me like a ton of bricks that that is the same scenario that Dave Ward goes through every day of his life. <laughs> so it's a good thing, though, because it's better for people to know who you are than not know who you are. <laughs> Let me start today by thanking all of you for getting up early and being here this morning and supporting PCA, especially to our presenting sponsor, the Hanover Company, also to our all-stars, Polly and Maury Bowden, the Scotty Zorns Foundation, and the Wade Smith Foundation. Now at this time, I'd like to call Joshua Taylor up to lead us in prayer. Joshua, if you don't mind, please. Hello, everyone. It's definitely a pleasure to be here today. I'm grateful and honored to be here. Um, everyone, bow your heads, close your eyes. God, we just thank you for this day, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. Um, just giving us grace and mercy to wake us up and everyone to make us um, here safely this morning. We just thank you for that in itself, God. We just thank you um, just for the privilege to um, be able to be supporting these young athletes, Lord. Um, having the mentors, having the parents, the guidance, and all the essential talents and blessings that you've bestowed upon them to, to be where they are today, Lord, not just physically, but mentally, and all the things that you have for them to come in the future, God. But we just thank you for right now and what you're doing in them and the opportunities that um, PCA has given to them, and as long as all the sponsors too, as well, Lord. We just ask you that you bless everyone I'm here serving today, Lord, that um, you would bless them double fold. Um, and also just continue to plant the seeds in these um, young, I wouldn't say call them children, um, the, these young youth in their lives, Lord, continue to keep those mentors in each chapter of their life, Lord. Uh, we ask that you bless the food um, that we receive, let us be nourished by our body, just we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Joshua. Now, before we move on with our program, I'd like to direct your attention to the screens to check out the newest 60-second commercial for PCA done in partnership with Fox Supports. Get your head in the game. Come on. Are you setting the right example for your kids? Are you even trying? The ball's down there. What are you doing? You need to get some confidence. Come on, hustle up, get up there. <laughs> Reviewing last year, ad revenue has declined 10, I mean, 15%. Uh, Come on, get your head on straight. Before your child's next game, ask yourself, how would you like it if they copied your behavior? There are many ways which we can improve. That's for sure. You need to get some confidence. <laughs> Positive Coaching Alliance has valuable tips and tools to help our kids perform their best while keeping sports enjoyable for everyone. Their development zone is a great resource for parents like us. Positive Coaching Alliance, creating better athletes, better people. Learn more at positivecoach.org slash Fox Sports. That was pretty good, wasn't it? Fantastic. Such a positive message, and nothing drives it home better than seeing that role reversal thing. It kind of lets the parents know that uh, their behavior is just as important as the kids in all of this. And that is what PCA is really about, good sportsmanship for players and for parents also. Now, at this time, I'd like to, we'd like to hear from the executive director of PCA, Houston, 
and that he is a former NFL and Canadian football player himself. So please welcome A.J. Johnson to the stage. A.J. Thank you for that introduction, Butch. Uh, my daughter is here today, so I have to make sure I don't have uh, some of those actions uh, go against me this morning. But I'll be brief. Today we have a great program in front of us, and uh, I want to thank you all for coming. So as we said, this is our seventh annual scholarship and awards banquet. I remember uh, when PCA started here in Houston, this program was in the cafeteria of Straight Jesuit High School, and now we've grown to uh, over 200 people in attendance. So. For those of you who are fairly new to PCA, I want to provide you a brief background. It was launched in 1998 by Mr. Jim Thompson within the Stanford University Athletic Department. After seeing a win at all cost mentality in youth sports while coaching his son's baseball team, Jim's mission was simply to transform the culture of youth sports into a development zone with the goal to develop better athletes and better people. People often ask, as I go around and travel to these high schools and, and uh, youth sports organizations, what do you do, AJ? And I simply say, I believe sports provides a unique opportunity for valuable life lessons to be learned. I can remember my freshman year playing football at SMU. We won our very first game, and I said, wow, this is great. That's why I came here. And we proceeded to lose 10 games in a row. <laughs> I had a great opportunity to learn some valuable life lessons and overcome some adversity. When you lose every week, you, you, you figure out how to deal with it. But studies show that by the age of 13, most youth stop playing organized sports, and they miss out on some of those valuable opportunities to build character. I'm thankful for my parents who encouraged me to compete and allow me to experience those valuable life lessons, life lessons while growing up here in Houston. If we all take a moment to think we have someone in our life, a coach, a parent, a teammate that we can point to who made our sports experience one that we'll never forget, whether that's good or bad. At PCA, our wish is for every student athlete to have a positive youth sports experience. And this, moment, this morning, you will hear from individuals who truly embrace what we refer to as the PCA way. As a wrap up, I want to again thank our presenting sponsor, the Hanover Group the Hanover Company, your support has been tremendous. And I would like to personally thank a few people, if you don't mind. Annie and Bob Graham, the Hildebrand Fund, Just Her Sports, Tudor Pickering and Holt Company, Sandy and Bill Bryan, Wade Smith and the Wade Smith Foundation, Comerica Bank, Atlantic Trust, Carol and Bruce Bilger Sr., Sylvie and Gary Crum, Laura and Carl Geisler, Kim and David Sterling, St. John School, The Village School, Allison and John Wallace, Pony Up, Michael Rudin, Steve Gibson, Jimmy Dish, and Coach Ray Seals. I really appreciate everything that you all have done for us. And I know you, the next group of people, you all don't want this, but if you're a board member or if you're on the Women's Leadership Council, if you're a PCA staff member, national or local, volunteer, can you please stand for a moment or a PCA trainer? I really want to thank you for all the work that you do. Yes. There are a lot of countless hours that go into putting on an event like this, and our work is, is, going, is going on all year. And I really want to thank you all for what you do to help carry on the PCA mission. It means, it means a lot. Finally, I want to recognize and appreciate two very important pieces of the PCA movement who are joining us this morning. Hina Simpson, the PCA National Chief Operations Officer. She's with us today. And I'm excited to introduce, yes, 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 Hina, thank you. And I am super excited to have our founder and CEO of PCA, Mr. Jim Thompson here. <laughs> Under Jim's leadership, PCA is now a nationwide organization with 17 chapters and an expansion plan to launch three new chapters annually for a total of 26 chapters with a reach of 20 million youth athletes by 2020. Please help me give a warm Texas welcome to Mr. Jim Thompson. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, uh, Joshua, what a uh, really inspirational prayer. And I really loved that you, you mentioned the wait staff, the people who um, make this all happen, and, and AJ, the people who've been working. I know uh, a bunch of you were here late last night, early this morning. Uh, you know, I get to cruise in here and, and have a great time, and, and just it's really wonderful to recognize all the people who, who made this all possible. Um, I want to I wanna start by asking a question. What does society need from youth sports? We spend a lot of time thinking about what do kids need in youth sports, but I want to turn that around. What does society need from youth sports? <clears throat> and I think what we need are people, athletes who elevate the game, who when they have an opportunity to raise the level of the game, they do so. We need coaches. I really, it was, it was wonderful to talk to Scott Zorn today and, and I got to meet Scotty uh, quite a few years ago when he and his, his fellow coaches were honored at Stanford. We need coaches who recognize and can help athletes identify their highest and best self. We all have you know, higher self and a, a lower self and coaches are in a, an amazing opportunity. I've, I've heard three people since I've been in Houston in the last day or so who've said, my parents would tell me to do something, and I was like, ah. my coach would tell me to do something, and boom, I did it. Coaches have so much opportunity beyond just a scoreboard to help kids identify their highest and best self and then work to become that self. We're going to... We're going to hear from some fantastic triple impact competitor award winners here today. And every event like this I've been at, they're always the, the, the stars. And I've been at a lot of these events because all of the chapters around the country are emulating PCA Houston. <clears throat> PCA Houston was the first chapter. Uh, it got started thanks to uh, two really strong supporters, David Weekly and um, Bob Graham, who is here. And then now we have 17. Two weeks ago, we were in Austin for the 16th chapter. And then last Friday uh, in Seattle for a 17th chapter. <clears throat> and th uh, this breakfast is, is kind of a, a really interesting place where things happen because la uh, two years ago, I was sitting next to Bob Graham, as I am uh, today, and he said, why don't you have a chapter in Austin? And I said, well, that's a, that's a good question. And um, within uh, later that day, Bob uh, texted me and said, you know, I'll help you financially get that going. And now we, we have a chapter in Austin. So we're really excited about that. <laughs> and I know, John Wallace, you were, you were also pushing for that as well. Um, but the point I want to make about this chapter is it's really, it's really the flagship chapter for our movement across the country. And so many things that get started here are emulated by our, our other chapters. Um, and I also want to, um, I want to thank um, Stephen Trobert for being our triple impact professional. You know, it's, there's, there's, there are some differences between sports and business but there's a lot of commonalities. And when I talk to coaches and I say about what a triple impact competitor is, someone who makes his team better, makes, I'm sorry, makes himself better, her teammates better, and the game better by the way he or she competes, I've never once had a coach who said, oh, I don't want that. Every coach wants that. Those are individuals who elevate the game. Um, and we want people who elevate the game, athletes who elevate the game, and then who emerge as citizens who elevate our society. I think we, you know, in the, in the newspapers every day, we see political and business leaders who don't necessarily take the opportunity to elevate the game. And what if we have a vision of hundreds of thousands of high school athletes coming out of sports seeing themselves as triple impact competitors, seeing themselves as elevators of the game, and then going into becoming police officers, teachers, attorneys, coaches, you name it, uh, and, and politicians and business leaders who elevate our entire society. 
<clears throat> I want to uh, thank especially some, what uh, AJ is calling some legacy board members, some, some board members of Positive Coaching Alliance Houston who have been with us from the very beginning or right after that. <clears throat> I had an opportunity a few years ago uh, to spend a day with Jim Collins. Jim Collins, who wrote the book Good to Great. Um, he charges, I don't know, $50,000 for a talk, and um, I got to know him at Stanford, so I got to go spend a day with him for free. And one of the things he, he mentioned was that when you look at success in business, the longevity of the people in that organization, the board members and the key staff, is really a key to success. Now, if you have somebody that's not doing the work, you, get, you need to make a change. But the great organizations have people who stay with that organization, with that company for a long time. And we have a bunch of legacy board members, some who are here, some who aren't. And I want to I wanna thank each of them. And you know, people will say, well, hold your applause to the end. No, no. When I read a name, let's give applause to that person. Now, I'm going to start with uh, I'll tell you what, we'll hold the applause for the people who aren't here. I'm going to read those first. Uh, Jim Bailey. Mitch Cox. Yeah, okay. Jim Bailey. <laughs> Mitch Cox. Brock Hudson. Oh, there they are. And I think everybody else is here. Uh, Sandy Bryan, come on up. Yes, come on up. Steve Gibson, come on up. Did, are, are all Houstonians so shy? Michael Rudin, come on up. John Wallace, come on up. I think I got everybody. Is there, is there um, somebody on that list that I didn't call? Good, OK. And I want my picture taken with these people. Okay, I, I encourage you to come back next year because there's going to be more great things that happen and uh, really an honor for Hannah and I to be here representing our national office. Uh, AJ, thank you very much. Jim, we want to say thank you very much for bringing such a quality organization to our community. I mean, PCA not only develops better athletes, but you're developing better people, and that may be even more important. So thank you very much, Jim. Appreciate that. It is time now to honor our triple impact competitors, and simply put, this is what it is. A triple impact competitor is a student athlete who makes improvement as an individual, makes their team better, and improves the sport that they are participating in. The program was actually started some six years ago by handing out eight $1,000 scholarships. But in just six short years, more than 800 students have applied for the PCA Triple Impact Competitor Scholarships from 85 different schools and 25 different school districts. And PCA could not have gotten all of this done without your generous support, so we want to thank you for coming to this banquet again. Now, throughout the program, we will introduce to you our scholarship finalist. The winners will be announced at the end of the program. We will give all the winners to come up on stage. But for now, we'd like to ask the audience, unlike Jim, maybe to hold your applause until after all the names are read. So that would be great. And if the students would just stand up and wave or something, that would be pretty cool too. Our first finalist is Lillian Bean from Duchesne Academy of the Sacred Heart. She excels at basketball. She loves music. 
She doesn't have a favorite color yet, but I think she's working on that. That, that blouse is pretty nice right there. Uh, and she is always adding to her bucket list, which is a very good thing. Next up is Caroline Crawford from Stratford High School. Caroline is a cross country and track and field sports star. That's her thing. She is also the leader of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, vice president of her school's National Honor Society, and trees are her favorite part of nature. Kaya Daniel. Is Kaya here? All right, there she is. She's from the Audi International School. Kaya participates in basketball and lacrosse. And she is also a very active member of the Art Honor Society, the French Honor Society, and the National Honor Society. She is also an aspiring product designer and screenwriter. And this part, I think, is very cool because she actually designed the logo and class sweatshirt for the Audi class of 2017. That's very cool. Crystal Gamboa from Yes Prep East End. Crystal is a volleyball player and founder and president of her school's yearbook club. She is service manager for the National Honor Society and really enjoys helping out in the community. She also loves riding scary roller coasters. <laughs> Zosimo Garcia, who's not here today because he's busy. I know where he is. Also from Yes Prep East End. And in case you were wondering, the name Zosimo uh, actually is derived from the Greek language. It means full of life. He is a volleyball player, and he loves traveling, and his favorite season is fall. Allison Gonzalez from Maid Creek High School. There's Allison. She plays softball, is a member of the Best Buddies. She is consumed by wanderlust, and I'm embarrassed to say I don't know what that is. I didn't find out about it. <laughs> and Allison is a conspiracy theorist, so when this is all over with, I'd like to talk to you about that Kennedy assassination. I don't think Oswald did that at all, so we will talk about that. How about a big round of applause for these seven finalists? Now it is time for us to honor our Inspiration Award winner. To win this award, you must have significant athletic achievement. You must be a role model, and just as important, you must transition your athletic gifts into a leadership role for the good of the entire community. This year, PCA is honoring Mr. David Latin as our inspirational award winner. He, of course, is a native Houstonian, attended Worthing High School, which he told me this morning, and went on to play for the legendary Don Haskins at Texas Western and won the national championship in 1966. If you've seen the movie Glory Road, it's about David and his teammates and Coach Haskins. It's a great movie, so if you haven't seen it, you may want to check that out. He was also inducted into the Texas Black Sports Hall of Fame and into the Naismith Hall of Fame with Texas Western and his teammates. He also played in the NBA and the ABA. And for, for you young people out there, I really don't have time to explain what the ABA is or what it was, but understand that it was big afros and a lot of great slam dunks and some exciting basketball. And that is the ABA. So please welcome a man who is dedicated to serving the Houston community, our 2016 PCA Inspiration Award winner, David Latine. David, if you would come up, please, sir. What a great morning. I like to see all the smiling faces. And, uh, I'm an early bird. I usually I get up early and work out every morning anyway, so it's okay with me. I want to give you, uh, tell you about a childhood experience uh, that I had when I was about seven. You know, we have, to, let me show you what. Well, anyway, I have my cell phone in my pocket. This is, that's the size of, TV during the, in the late 40s and early 50s. So it didn't have, there was no ESPN and no CNN to look at. So as youngsters, we didn't have anything to do. So we, we watched a little black and white TV that went off at midnight. And uh, we copy, you have to be careful now because kids will copy what you do or what they see on TV. They'll try to copy it. So we saw guys 
Uh, we didn't have anything to do, so we saw the two of us, we saw guys with rifles and they were shooting and having fun like cowboys do. So uh, as youngsters, we said, well, let's try that. So we went out and got these little sticks and started running around in the brush, just having fun. So one day, this giant thing came from nowhere, a 20 footer. It was dark and ugly, and uh, we didn't know what it was. And my friend said, is that a bear? I said, I don't know, but let's not wait around to see. <laughs> so we took off uh, running, and, and my friend said, you're going to have to run really fast, man, I'll run this bear. I said, I am not trying to try not run a bear, I'm trying to outrun you. I want to tell you, we didn't go hunting anymore. <laughs> and that's when I kind of discovered basketball. <laughs> you know, it's important that we stress to our youngsters to uh, focus, establish goals, and be, to be successful. I, I remember, in the, remember in the eighth grade, I went out for the basketball team, and I was cut. It was eight of us. We all got cut. And so the coach suggested that uh, we would go over to Rice Stadium and run the stadium stairs to get stronger and get better. Well, everything after that was uphill for me. The next year I was the best, best basketball, high, the ninth grade basketball player in the city of Houston and then everything else went on from there. And I'm telling you, hard work and dedication means a lot. It's a cliche, and I know kids, we tell them that all the time, but they don't really listen. They say, eh, what are you talking about? But no one ever got anything, ever in life, that they were successful doing anything unless they worked at it. Or somewhere along the line, they worked at it to make themselves better. So, in ending, I want, if there are any kids listening, uh, this is very important. And uh, you don't have to be a basketball player or a football player to be successful in life. You can be a lot of other things as well. But your destiny may not include Olympic medals or national championships, but it will ensure your place in the scheme of things. Open your heart, open your mind. The possibilities are endless. Your destiny awaits you. Thank you. <laughs> David, could you hold on just one second, please? Jimmy's got something for you. David, thank you very much, sir. You know, you mentioned getting cut from the team. Michael Jordan and Clyde Drexler also got cut from the team, so <laughs> you're pretty good company there. Thank you, sir. It's time now to meet the next seven scholarship finalists, and once again, we respectfully ask that you hold the applause till we get down to the end of the list. And we start with Cody Graham. He is on the basketball team at St. Pius High School and is a member of the preaching team and attended the National Dominican Preaching Conference in Michigan. Cody is also the president of the Black History Club and is active in the National Honor Society. He plays the piano and his goal is to play it really well before he's done with that. Joshua Hamilton from the Woodlands High School. Joshua, track and field is his sport, but he also played soccer and football. Joshua would like to be a wildlife veterinarian one day. And in his spare time, he leads a junior high school Bible study group. Very good, Joshua. Thank you very much. Next up is Benjamin Hughes from Memorial High School. Benjamin plays football at Memorial High School. There's Benjamin. Okay, I didn't see you back there. You stand up and let, let people get a chance to see you there. Benjamin plays football at Memorial High School, can solve a Rubik's Cube in under a minute. Very impressive there. He, 
He is a nationally ranked chess player and is a huge fan of the rapper Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Colin James from Pearland High School. There's Colin. Colin is a basketball player, but he also writes computer programs and is planning to major in computer science when he goes to college. He collects shoes, and he has more than 50 pair in his closet. How do you wear all those shoes? <laughs> and something we both have in common, he actually loves Bluebell ice cream, especially the cookies and cream. Kennedy Jones. Kennedy is from Booker T. Washington High School. There she is, over here to my right. At Booker T, she excels in volleyball, basketball, softball, and golf. Since the ninth grade, she has accumulated, and check this out, she has accumulated more than 300 volunteer hours. That is fantastic. And her favorite thing to do is travel and learn about different cultures. Colton Killian from Kingwood Park High School. Colton, there he is. Okay, cool. Colton is captain. He is a captain on the basketball and the baseball teams. He is also a member of the Best Buddies and a Reading Buddies leader. He started playing sports at the age of three and has played eight different sports since. Drake Lamb from Kempner High School. That's Drake. Drake is active in four sports at Kempner, baseball, track and field, powerlifting, and football. He is a three-year letterman on the football team. He loves to read and write, and his goal is to one day be an astronaut and boldly go where no man has gone before. <laughs> How about a big round of applause for those seven finalists? Well, the only thing better than handing out PCA scholarships is uh, triple impact competitor scholarships is watching the seeds that were planted continue to grow, and we've seen a lot of that in this organization. These kids are doing fantastic things in Houston and all around the country, attending schools like Harvard, Princeton, Johns Hopkins, Rice, and many, many more. Now, Reese Rosales was a PCA scholarship winner from Straight Jesuit back in 2014. He was a two-year captain on the basketball team and was actually the team MVP in his senior year. Reese is now in his second year at Rice University where he is majoring in sports management. He is also a member on the Rice crew team and has already interned with the Houston Rockets. And we are pleased to have Reese with us today to offer some words of inspiration. Please welcome Reese Rosales to the stage. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Butch, for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you to PCA for having me out here today. I know it's a little early wake-up call for some of y'all, some of you high school athletes. Uh, probably appreciate this over a Saturday morning practice, so thank y'all for coming out. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you today about a couple lessons I've learned uh, in my athletic career, and especially outside of my athletic career. Uh, and talk about how uh, the PCA has played a large part in that and how I hope uh, the PCA continues uh, to influence me and hopefully I can influence it a little bit. <clears throat> so January uh, 2014, uh, right after my junior season, so we're getting ready to, to rev things up for senior year and you know most people are excited to have a glory year, right? Senior year is your, your sort of, uh, your king of the king of the hill, so to speak, in high school, and most people would want it to be easy, want it to be a cakewalk, and, and to be honest, that's what I wanted as well. I didn't really want to have to suffer or pay any more dues. You know, as an underclassman, you, you kind of, uh, you're always behind the seniors, right? The, those are the guys you want to be, those are the guys you look up to. Uh, but I learned really quickly that senior year would be the hardest year and the most uh, difficult year athletically, academically, 
you name it, I'm, I'm sure you high school seniors are familiar with how crazy the college admissions process is. Uh, so I learned very quickly that that would be uh, a tall task. So anyway, January, had a conversation with my coach, another teammate of mine that I'd played with since uh, junior high. Sat down with coach and uh, he gave it to us straight. I always admired my coach for being an honest guy, maybe too honest at times. You know, it, sometimes the truth stings a little bit, but uh, he sat us down and he said, I can't guarantee that you'll be on the team next year. I can't guarantee any, any playing time or, or anything like that. I especially can't guarantee that we'll win, right? But uh, my, my teammate Jake and I looked at each other and, and we, we decided that we'd stick with it because we knew that, that we had a place on that team. And so sure enough, a year later, uh, he was a starter for the whole season, got some all district honors. And, and as you heard from Butch, I went on to be the MVP, which is, you know, that was, uh, that was something I didn't think was possible. It was something that, you know, looking back, kind of crazy, right? Big surprise for me. Uh, it wasn't a surprise to some people, which, you know, obviously that's the power of other people believing in you when you don't believe in yourself. Uh, but moving on, coming out of that, that really was the epitome of, of my athletic experience up to that point. You know, as a kid, I was not uh, gifted with the, the ability of public speaking or even just speaking in general. I didn't really talk until I was three or four. Uh, so I really had a, a difficult time coming out of my shell and, and sports early on, you know, t-ball uh, from that very young age is a way to get you out and about. It's a way to get you uh, active and definitely with basketball. To this day, I'm not the most physical guy, right? I, I don't really like it when people exert force on me. I'm not a big fan of confrontation. Uh, but in high school, you know, playing 6A basketball in Texas, uh, there's a lot of contact. Uh, down low, especially as a as a center, uh, and so that's something that you learn. It's something you got to deal with because it, it. For me, it was about my teammates. For me, it was about what I was leaving behind, uh, the people that were coming after me. You know, in that same conversation I mentioned earlier, my teammate and I had a conversation about the freshmen and sophomores that were in our class, uh, or on our team rather, coming behind us and. And we both agreed they had way more talent. Some of them had way more talent than we would ever have, right? They were able to do things on the basketball court that uh, we could only do in 2K, uh, you know? So we knew that what we were doing in that senior year was really for them, and it was really about what we were leaving behind. Uh, and I think to finish with, uh, with that high school experience, looking back, being removed for two years now from high school, the things I remember the most I mean, you remember winning and losing and, and overall records and going to the playoffs. Those things are exciting and those are things to be proud of. But uh, the things I hold on to the most are my teammates, right, my coaches, the people, and the experiences that we had off the court. Uh, one in particular, it was, it was during the season, right, so we took time out of a Saturday uh, to go down to Texas Children's Hospital. And we actually visited with uh, a whole floor's worth of, uh, of patients that were there, uh, big, small, uh, different levels of uh, uh, issues and battles they were facing, right? But one, one visit in particular, there was a boy from Cypress, Texas, which is a suburb right outside of town where I grew up. Uh, he went to Cypher High School. He was on the basketball team uh, until six months prior to that when he was diagnosed with cancer. Right, so he was, he was one of the boys that we visited. And this was a guy that uh, all he did was play basketball. That was his passion, that was his, that was his love, and it had been taken away from him. And so for us, you know, the whole team to go in there, and, and I know some of us on the, on the bus ride there, for sure, were complaining about not being able to practice because we were taking time out of our day to go do this, right, and not looking forward to practice later in the day. and, uh, and that definitely changed very quickly when we met this individual. Uh, and so what, what actually happened is he, he asked if, if we could pray with him. And, and so sure enough, we did. You know, our coach was all over it, and he, he got us in a circle, and we, we joined hands. And, and he asked me to do the prayer. And this is an audience of 
12, 13 people were in a small room, nothing like this, right? Nothing like any, any large crowd I've ever addressed. But I, I gotta say that was the most difficult uh, speaking I've probably ever done, uh, right? To, to that kind of audience, but it really showed how, uh, and that was something I didn't think I could do. You know, looking back, that's just, that's a tall task and it's something that, it's a very heavy thing, but I had my teammates there, I had my coach there, and I, you know, the PCA always talks about better athletes and better people. Uh, and that was definitely one of the moments where those two went hand in hand. You know, we were athletes first on that day, but we were, we were helping this young gentleman and, and the rest of us reminding each other that it's, it's more important to be a better person. Uh, so going off of that, sort of what happens uh, after high school or after college, or if some of you are fortunate enough to have a pro career, I wish, it, I wish you all the best. But after it's all over, you have to be able to take what you learned and apply it to a job, to your family, to relationships that you have. And so for me, I think the biggest thing is knowing your role, right? Like I mentioned earlier, my teammate and I, we knew that we were around for the other guys. We weren't around to score points for us. We weren't around to get accolades for us. We were there for the guys that were coming after us. And so with that in mind, especially lately as an intern, whether it's I was with the Rockets, right, I'm back again for my second season with them, or working at the Final Four, I've got a Super Bowl opportunity coming up. Those are all really, they sound like really cool opportunities. And they are, they're exciting. But for the most part, you're the bottom of the food chain, right? You're the guy paying your dues. You're there to be seen and not heard, right? Um, and so it really, that sort of lesson, taking that from high school is, is just really important because it's really easy to get discouraged coming out of being a senior in high school, being the, like I said, the king of the hill and then having to do the grunt work. But you, you take what you learn and you see that the grunt work is vital too. You see that there's purpose in it and you see that if that's a place where you can add value, then maybe that's something you can do. And, Personally, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know what my pipeline is to, uh, to a career or to, a, to success down the road, but I know that based on the things that the PCA encourages and the things that I've learned personally, uh, these are universal things to apply. So looking for a place to add value, making sure that those that are coming before you and those that you're with now are just as prepared as you are, and uh, encouraging those good values in everyone that you encounter. So to wrap up, I want to thank uh, the PCA again, uh, the board and all the chief sponsors uh, for awarding me the scholarship a couple years ago. It's gotten, to me, it's gotten me to where I am today. And uh, lastly, I saw that some of y'all are looking into computer science and a lot of very interesting majors and I encourage you to apply to Rice University. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and lastly, I want to ask that everyone takes a look at their table. There are donation cards there in the center. Uh, and I ask that if you feel inspired, if you feel uh, so inclined to donate, that would be much appreciated. Uh, we'll actually have people going around here in a minute. If you want to fill out that card and hold it up, we'll collect it from you. And, uh, and just know that it's going to a very, very good cause, a very needed cause. Uh, so thank you very much, and God bless. Thank you very much, Reese. And, you know, I think he pointed out something very important uh, right near the end of his speech there. And a lot of people really don't get that aspect of it because I was fortunate enough to play college football also. And it's not the games you remember. And it's not the, this play or that play. It's the people that you're sitting next to. It's the guy you locked out of the hotel room in his underwear. It's that kind of, that's what sticks out in your mind. But those friendships last a lifetime. They really do. And while I'm at it, thank you very much, Reese, and thank you all for making a donation today to this worthy cause. It is definitely greatly appreciated. Well, that takes us to the PCA Triple Impact Professional Award. It goes to someone who strives to make themselves better, make their coworkers and their company better, and make the community a better place to live in. Now, the Triple Impact Professional is also an exceptional role model for student athletes like all of you guys at this banquet this morning. So with that said, our 2016 Triple Impact Professional Award goes to Stephen Trauber, the Vice Chairman and Global Head of Energy at City Investments and Corporate Banking. Stephen, you're gonna like this, Reese. He actually played 
basketball at Rice in 1982. And he credits his time on the hardwood with teaching him the importance of preparation, hard work, and teamwork, and how it all comes together. He also loves coaching youth basketball, which is fantastic. He and his wife, Leticia, are dedicated to giving back to the Houston community. So how about another big hand for Mr. Steven Trauber, our 2016 Triple Impact Professional Award winner. Thank you very much. Um, by looking at the finalists we have here today and, and Reese listening to your speech, I am confident, so ever confident that our future's in good hands. <clears throat> and I think hopefully, think about some of you guys, think about running for president. We need some good candidates. <laughs> From what I can see, it doesn't take a lot. Um, I do, want to, I do want to recognize one person uh, real quick um, because this individual has to leave and uh, he's, he's new to Houston, but he won't be new to you all for very long. Uh, he happens to be staying with us now. He, uh, he just recently graduated from Gonzaga, two years at Kentucky basketball, two years at Gonzaga, and is the newest member of the Houston Rockets. Found out last week he's a full member, made the team. Kyle, I appreciate you being here. Kyle Wilcher. I will say he's, he is truly the best bat, uh, shooter on the Houston Rockets, there, and every Rocket would tell you that. Um, he, he actually, I got in, my flight was late last night, I got in about 12.30. He, he came in after uh, playing in Dallas last night, and he came in about 20 minutes after I did, and he still had the ability to get here. I know he has to go uh, work out with the Rockets now, so Kyle, if you, I know you need to go. So if you need to go, by all means. Um, thank you, Butch. I appreciate that introduction. Uh, thank you, Albert Johnson. Um, Jim Dish and the entire board of directors uh, of PCA for, for this honor. I actually uh, put together some thoughts on a piece of paper. I was in the, the East Coast yesterday making a couple presentations on energy and I speak a lot about energy as I run our global energy group for city and I was afraid that if I just came up here and talked I'd start talking about energy and I, 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 I wanted to make sure I got my thoughts down so when I was on a plane last night which was two hours delayed I started uh, jotting out some stuff. Um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate all the uh, Triple Impact uh, competitor finalists here today. Your accomplishments both in your sports and in your own personal lives would be highly commended. You all have made your coaches, teammates extremely proud. Keep up the good work. I'd also like to thank uh, my family who showed up here today early in the morning, dragging them out of bed, uh, particularly uh, my in-laws. Always good uh, to think your in-laws still like you and will show up at 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> my wife, Letitia, and uh, in particular, my, uh, my youngest son, JT, who has actually played also a year at Rice in basketball, was a member of one, my team, which I'll talk about in a minute, the national champions AAU team, uh, great friend of Justice Winslow's, um, and uh, who, until this morning, only thought 9 o'clock came once a day. So I appreciate you uh, getting up so early in the morning. And uh, my oldest son is here as well, and, and the newest member of the Trauber family is uh, his, his wife. Uh, they just got married this summer. I was asked to uh, provide a little insight into how sports played such a pivotal role in shaping me and helping me to achieve what I've been so fortunate to achieve in the, in the business world. In doing so, let me say that aside from my family, both my family, my parents, my brothers, sisters, um, including my wife and kids, there may be nothing uh, more that has contributed to my success uh, than, than athletics. It was athletics introduced to me by my father at a very young age and the many coaches that I played for over the many years that instilled in me so many of the characteristics that has led me to where I am today. Characteristics like drive, motivation, confidence, competitiveness, teamwork, the ability to get knocked down and get back up again. Even traits like communication, empathy, my wife doesn't think I have a lot of empathy, but empathy, <laughs> winning and losing with grace, and the losing part is still hard to get over. I'm trying to master losing, but I will say, 
that even in losing, and I've learned over the years to really look within and learn from my losses and see what I could have done better to help my team. Athletics has been such a huge part of my life for as far as I can remember. My father was an Olympic swimmer, and he got me involved in athletics when I was just two or three years old. He tried to persuade me to be like him and to be a swimmer. He had me in the pool every day, every morning at 6 a.m. for competitive swim instruction. The problem was, even though that I was told I could be a good swimmer, I'm not sure how anybody at the age of three knows somebody can be a good swimmer. I hated swimming. <laughs> I mean, think about this. Back and forth and back and forth, staring at that black line at the bottom of the pool. Have you ever wondered what a three-year-old, or for that matter, anybody thinks about when they're swimming? Back and forth, back and forth. Uh, and I'm sure the swimmers out there just love it. I just couldn't take it. Um, I, think I, I think you know what I'm saying. Nevertheless, that was my introduction to athletics and to competition itself. Over time, I was introduced to many other sports. Like many of you in this room, I played soccer, basketball, football, tennis. I even ran track and cross country. I did just about everything involving athletics. Throughout my life, I had many coaches, gym teachers, mentors, and trainers that worked with me and drove my competitive spirit. They worked to motivate me and taught me to be a better athlete and, and a better person. I had great coaches and I had some not so great coaches, but I'm thankful for every one of them. Attention, their attention, training, commitment that they made to me and my teams throughout the years. If I could do so, I'd reach out to every one of those coaches now and thank them. Because while I'm sure my parents made me thank many of them along the way, it wasn't until I was much older and had lost track of the whereabouts of many of my coaches from long ago that I had realized what those coaches had truly instilled in me. It wasn't just the skills required to be successful on the field, the court, or the track, but rather it was like a piece of fabric that was being sewn over a long period of time, one piece of thread at a time until what's, what started became, became something much bigger than that piece of fabric, it became a blanket or a sweater. In this case, the finished product was me. And that finished product wasn't unveiled nor really fully recognized until I was many years into my own business career. Those coaches, over so many years, had instilled all of the traits that I highlighted earlier. The ability to work together as a team, to reach and achieve beyond what I thought was achievable. They taught me that team is far greater than the sum of the parts, and that at times by putting one's own goals and desires to the side for the benefit of the team, that greater achievements could be had. These coaches instill competitiveness that drives me every day. They instill a tremendous amount of motivation and confidence to move on and achieve more. And equally so, they taught me to give back because had it not been for their own giving, their own personal sacrifices, time away from their families, monetary contributions to our teams, their own personal sweat equity, I would not be here today as the person that I am. Their willingness and selflessness to provide to the teams that I participated in has instilled in me not only the desire, but the need to give back. It has been said, to whom much is given, much is expected. Let me say that one more time. To whom much is given, much is expected. That second time was for all of you younger folks in the audience. I hope you give that some thought because you'll have a lot of opportunity to give back in your lives. So today, my wife and I serve on many not-for-profit boards of directors. We contribute financially and we raise money for charities throughout the city. But even more importantly than the dollars that we give is the time that we give to all those that need it much more than we. In my adult life, I've been so fortunate to be able to do what so many coaches have done for me. I've had the opportunity to coach many teams and many young men and women. I coached my own kids' teams for many years. And I coached for nine years 
what I think will be, has been and will be one of the greatest basketball teams of all time. An AAU team that was fortunate to win two national championships, that participated in the world championships and finished third. All and all of the boys on that team, I'm very happy to say and proud to say, went on to college and every one of them has played collegiate basketball. In fact, one of them is David's grandson, David Latin, who plays for Oklahoma. The starting five of that team will all likely end up in the NBA, two of which are already there after one year in college, Justice Winslow and Kelly Oubre. Three are very close. One of them, our starting point guard, was the number one recruit to Kentucky this year, De'Aaron Fox from here in Houston. All of these boys are from here in Houston. I can only hope and pray that over the many years that I had the opportunity to spend with these fine young men, that they too learn many of the traits that my various coaches taught to me. I've been very fortunate in my life, but I've also come to understand that the seeds planted and watered all of those years by so many coaches that I had the opportunity to play for have sprouted and grown. So today I want to publicly thank all of the coaches, mentors, trainers, and teachers that I've been so fortunate to play for. And I'd like to thank every coach, mentor, teacher, and parent here today for what you do every day to instill in others many of the same traits that made me who I am. Finally, I'd like to ask all of the kids and young adults here today to find a time to thank all of your coaches in your lives, including your parents that coach, teach, and sacrifice every day for you. It will likely take many years, like it took me, to fully understand and appreciate the contributions that they are making in your life and the successes that you have already had and the many more that you will undoubtedly have in the future. Thank you all for being here, contributing to the PCA, and giving back. You are truly making a difference in many lives, and thank you, PCA, for this wonderful honor. I'm truly, truly honored. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen, and we are very grateful for your support at PCA and everything you and your wife do for the Houston community. Thank you very much. Now it's time to meet our remaining scholarship finalist, and we start with Alexander Matchett from Angleton High School. He played ba baseball at Angleton and will be attending Texas A&M in the fall of 2017. And Alexander has never met a fishing or hunting trip that he did not love. Amber Park from the Village School. Amber excelled in three sports, basketball, volleyball, and lacrosse. She is president of the National Honor Society and has been in the band for seven years and plays the clarinet. But the thing that will save her tons of money in the future, I mean tons of money in the future, she still shops for her shoes in the kids' section. <laughs> Anna Lilia Rojas. Anna Lilia attends Chinkapin Preparatory High School. She is under five feet tall, uh, but she is really big when she's on the volleyball court. She has four siblings and really enjoys going out and helping people in the community. Actually, she went on a mission trip to Honduras recently. Aurelia Ortega from Cristo Rey Jesuit College Preparatory High School. Aurelia plays uh, soccer and cross country. Those are her sports. She is an officer in the National Honor Society. And she has a couple of hobbies that will probably last her a lifetime. She enjoys gardening and reading. Next on our list is Charlotte Shilton from the Village School. I think she's at a track meet this morning. She couldn't be with us, I think. Yes, okay, yes, she is. Charlotte runs cross country. She's actually lived in six different countries, 
loves to scuba dive and has never gotten a muscle cramp. How can that be? <laughs> That's what it says. Crystal and Thede from St. Agnes Academy. There's Crystal and right there. She plays softball and in her spare time, she is an assistant volleyball coach at St. Jerome Middle School. She plays the piano and is a senior life team leader and president of her Girl Scout troop. Next up is Ethan Wang from St. John's School. There's Ethan right down here. Ethan is on the swim team, speaking of swimming. <laughs> but he loves it, right, Ethan? <laughs> he is also president of the East Asian Affinity Group. He plays the trombone and is a senior peer leader. Anna Winter from Incarnate Word. Anna? Oh, there you go. We met earlier, yes. Anna is a softball and volleyball or her sports. She is director of the Young Leaders Program. Anna is also chairperson of the Archdiocesan Youth Council. And like a lot of us, she is also obsessed with ice cream. <laughs> How about a big hand for all 20 of our scholarship finalists? <laughs> now, at this time, I'd like to take a minute to recognize our 2016 PCA National Double Go Coach Award winner, Scott Mastro. Scott is the head cross country coach. He's the head coach of the cross country team at the Village School. There he really cares about his student athletes and work very hard to create an environment where they are treated with dignity and respect. He is a great example of the positive role coaches can play in the development of their student athletes. Coach Mestro could not be with us this morning, but we are still in luck. He's actually at a cross-country regional meet in Dallas, but we are happy to have Dustin Embry, the Senior Director of Athletics and Development at the Village School, here to accept the award on Scott's behalf. Thank you very much, Dustin, for being here to accept that award on Scott's behalf. Now our 2016 Houston Double Gold Coach Award winner is Dave Colston of the Woodlands High School. Dave is currently the running backs coach for the varsity and the junior varsity teams. He has also helped out with the Lady Highlanders soccer program, helping them to some success there. He loves being an educator and he feels privileged to be in a situation to help so many kids become successful members of our community. That is the attitude that has made him the Houston Double Go Coach Award winner. Coach, would you please come up and receive your award? Coach, thank you very much, and it was nice sitting down at the front table with him there because I found out I grew up in Louisiana. He has a lot of connections in Louisiana, so we had, we had a lot to talk about, and it wasn't all about Cajun food either. It was some good things to talk about. Thank you very much, Coach. Next up, we have a very special award to present. It's called the Scotty Zorns Award. Scotty Zorns, unfortunately, left us way too soon. He was just 26 years old but not before making his mark in the coaching community. This award was created to honor a young coach who, like Scotty, has the passion for mentoring and bonding with young athletes. This year's winner is the girls' golf coach at Episcopal High School, Megan Moak. When she took over the team, now five years ago she took over the team, they finished dead last. Well, after setting some goals and working extremely hard to achieve those goals, and putting that hard work to work, this team went on to win the conference championship by 34 strokes in the spring five years later. So that is fantastic. Further proof that hard work and determination does pay off in a big way. Please put your hands together to welcome Megan Moak, the winner of the 2016 Scotty Zorns Award, and Mr. Scott Zorns, Scotty's dad, who's here to make the presentation today.
Thank you very much, Megan. We really appreciate that. And as you can see, the drama has been building. And now this is the moment that we've all been waiting for, the announcement of the 2016 PCA Triple Impact Competitor Scholarship Award winners. We have some anxious young people, so let's get right to it, if we could. Uh, Jimmy or whoever's going to give out these awards, does anybody else need to be up here now? No. Well, when I, okay, not you. <laughs> when your name is called, please come to the stage and take a photo and receive your certificate. The first two scholarships today are funded by our presenting sponsor, the Hanover Company, and our longtime friends, Polly and Murray Bowden. And the winners are Anna Winter from Incarnate Word and Colin James from Pearland High School. <laughs> Congratulations, Anna and Colin. Our next scholarship is funded by Comerica Wealth Management, thanks to Matt Orth, PCA Houston board member and Comerica Wealth Management senior vice president. And the winner is Mr. Ethan Wang from St. John's School. <laughs> Congratulations, Ethan. The next scholarship is funded by Sandy and Bill Bryan. Sandy is one of PCA's legacy board members and has given so much to PCA over the years. She actually keeps the Positive Coaching Alliance going and we are truly grateful to have her support and all of her dedication. And the winner of this scholarship is Caroline Crawford from Stratford High School. Congratulations, Caroline. Our next scholarship is funded by Tudor Pickering Holt and Company. And your winner is Drake Lamb from Kempner High School. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Drake. Moving on, our next group of scholarships were made possible by a very generous friend of PCA. We are truly appreciative of this person's gift. It shows tremendous support. And since we have several names, I'm going to call them out one at a time so you can come out. But the first name on the list, the first winner is Colton Killian from Kingwood Park High School.
Congrats, Colton. And our next winner is Allison Gonzalez from Maid Creek High School. Cody Graham from St. Pius. Congrats, Cody. Amber Park from the Village School. Now our next two scholarship winners could not be with us this morning because they are participating in their respective sports. And that first winner is Zosimo Garcia from Yes Prep East End. He's at the state volleyball tournament. And Charlotte Shilton from the Village School. Charlotte is at a cross country meet in Dallas. But here with us this morning, we have another winner, Benjamin Hughes from Memorial High School. It's going to be a really good day if you win, too, huh? <laughs> Crystal Gamboa from Yes Prep East End. Congratulations, Crystal. Krista Lynn Thede from St. Agnes Academy. Krista Lynn, congratulations. And we have one more winner under this group. But we have more than that, but just one more under this group. Alexander Matchett from Angleton High School. The next five scholarships are funded by the Wade Smith Foundation. Mr. Wade Smith himself is here. They're called Smitty Scholars. And of course, Wade Smith, many of you will remember from his days with the Houston Texans. I'm sure they would be calling him again because they need offensive line help. <laughs> but look at all the weight he's lost. You can't play offensive line now. They'll put you in the backfield or something. <laughs> he will present the winners with their awards. So the first winner, the first Smitty Scholar is Joshua Hamilton from the Woodlands High School. Lillian Bean from Duchesne Academy of the Sacred Heart.
Kaya Daniel from the Audi International School. Congratulations, Kaya. Our next winner is Kennedy Jones from Booker T. Washington High School. Our final scholarship winner is Anna Lilia Rojas from Chincapin High School. Anna Lilia, congratulations, and Wade, thank you for everything you do for the Houston community. Really appreciate that. Now, math was never my strong suit. That is exactly how I got into TV, because I'm pretty ignorant at math. But if you've been counting, you will know that all 20 of our finalists were awarded scholarships today, this morning. Thanks to the generosity of our sponsors and friends. All of the finalists will receive a $2,000 scholarship on behalf of PCA Houston to be used for college next year. So let's give all the student athletes a huge round of applause and our donors also. Finally, thanks to all of you for coming out this morning and donating your time and your money to make this event such a huge success. At this time, I would like to ask all the scholarship finalists, would you please join me on stage for some more photos. Everyone else, be safe. Thank you for coming and have a great day. <laughs>